flipping switches. Um, this is something I've been working on lately, um, handling remote configurations uh, for mobile apps. Uh, so I thought I'd share a little bit about uh, what I've learned um, just every day, <laughs> trying to get it to work. Um, so remote settings, they let you control variables in your app from a server. Uh, this can be simple. I mean, so I'm going to talk about one way to do it today. There's lots of ways you could do this. I mean, you could do it with a simple URL on your server that um, returns a JSON object. Um, or you could use some sort of dedicated service like Firebase. Um, there's a bunch of others. There's Optimizely, and there's all kinds of services that do it. Um, some of the things this lets you do, uh, feature flags so that you can turn on or not turn on a feature until you're ready for it to be viewed by users. Um, continuous release, uh, so you can, you can push out code when you're ready for it to ship, um, even if it has stuff that's not ready for users to see yet. Targeted customization, so if you want particular users to get particular features first or completely separate. Um, A-B testing for testing messages and, and other things with users to see what works best. Uh, pranking customers, but I, I don't recommend that. Um, a few things to consider with doing something like this is uh, security. Um, I mean, if there is a switch in your app that can turn things on and off, then that's a switch that you should be careful with. Um, also versioning, um, so if you ship code in 1.2 that you're not going to turn on until 1.4, but when you flip that switch, that code is going to be on. So you need to know um, that you are only turning it on where you want it to be turned on. Um, and then the user experience. So if you are doing something like this where one day things are one way and the next day they're a different way and then the next day they're a third way. That's, uh, that's the kind of thing you, you really got to know that that is what you want to do. Um, so the service that I've worked with on this is called, is Firebase. It's from Google um, and Firebase, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's really a term for a whole bunch of services that Google offers for mobile uh, development. Um, and you can, you know, you can use bits of it without using other bits of it. Um, and so the, the part that I'm familiar with at this point is the remote config. Um, it lets you define parameters, uh, conditions for when those parameters change. It lets you target particular audiences so you can um, it kind of, it really, it kind of ends up pulling you into their analytics stuff because um, you need to provide data on your customers on something so that you can say, okay, I want this group to get this, these values. I want this group to get these other values. Um, they have predictions. So as you get that user data in there, um, you can have things based on uh, like what users, what, um, what users Google thinks might be about to delete the app or something like that. Um, they, have, they have particular tools for doing A-B testing. Um, so it's, it's not just the, um, you know, flip the switch. There's, um, that helps. There's the, um, uh, being able to experiment with, okay, I've got these two ways of doing this, and I want it to go to these particular users. I want it, I want it, like randomly distributed so that I can see which one I get better return on. Um, and so you can set that. Hey, this is the, this is the goal for this, and so you can get uh, reports back on if you're if you're reaching those goals or which version reaches those goals better. Um, and it's free. 
it's free for um, remote config in particular. Uh, and like there are like you, there are paid plans if you need extra stuff, but in general, it's it's pretty free. Um, so how do you set this up? So you start with um, setting up your parameters that you want in the app. So using their SDK, the app will ignore any settings it doesn't understand. And when you define a parameter, you give it a default value um, on the server and also in the client. Um, the values are strings, but they can be treated as numbers or booleans or whatever. Um, and this, this lets you set up just what you want to send to the app. And you can use this for, in lots of different ways. So you can use it as a flag to turn something off or on. You can use it for messaging. So that string could be a welcome message or something that you need to be able to change. Um, it could be a hex value for the color of a background. So you could have all of that in there that you could change on the fly. Um, back to the pranking your customers thing. Um, so once you have your parameters, then you can set up conditions. And so the conditions are, um, let you change the value in certain situations. Uh, and it gives you lots of different ways to target. So you can target, say, a random 20% of users. Uh, or you can target by app version, uh, which is something that we were just looking at this morning that uh, if you get in there and start playing with this and you see, hey, I can't set it, I can't choose that version. You have to choose your app first. And then you set a version for that app. Um, but then you can do lots of other things like user location. Um, like I was talking about with, with providing user data, you can set user attributes to target based on um, the predictions, um, all of that stuff. Um, and then on the client side, you, um, you include the SDK, you configure your default values that you want on, on the client, and you set it up to fetch and cache the remote settings. And you can define how long you want to cache for. So you could have it you know, for an hour or for you know, seconds. Just depends on, on how often you need it to, to check. Um, they also have a feature where you can do a push notification. Let's pause. Um, Tell you what, I will get through these next couple of slides and we can st stop before the demo and get some food. Um, so I was saying that you can fetch and cache the remote settings. The push thing, thank you. So we can, so you can, you can set up push notifications so that um, when you, when you need it to update the client to, to pull that to pull the server settings again, you can send out a notification, uh, like a silent notification that'll tell it to, to do a fetch. Um, and that way you can clear that cache when you need to. Um, and this kind of shows the, the hierarchy of these values. Um, so in your app, you set the default values for the settings you're expecting. And then when the app gets a value from the server, that will override the default. Um, and then on the server side, you have your default values and any conditions that apply to that user, those override the default. So. Okay, and I will set up for the demo and we can get some food.
Okay. Thanks. All right, so this is a little demo that I put together based, uh, it's mostly um, Google's example code with some extra things added to it. Um, so what I've done here, this is this is pretty basic way of doing this. Um, I wouldn't do it necessarily this way if I was doing a full app. Um, I would pull this stuff out into its own thing, uh, but just to kind of show what this does. So I've got a, where that's small. Nope. That's better. Um, so I've got this one screen with these different, uh, controls on it, um, and I'm using my uh, settings, my remote settings to control what, which, which of those features the user gets. Um, and so I've got the keys here um, that are what, what I get back from the server for the parameters, so those are the parameters. Um, Here's my defaults file. That does not get big here. So, um, but this is, it's for iOS development, it's a plist file. You, you put your, um, you can store your settings in, in there that can be read in to be your defaults for your uh, remote settings. And so when this loads, we set up the remote config. With the remote config settings, there's a settings file you have to download when you set up the SDK. And then you tell it where to find the defaults. And it'll read them in from there. And then here we're doing a fetch on launch so that we can update those values. Um, so when we do the fetch, um, we, we uh, cache the values, and then we update our view. And in updating our view, we just go through and we apply the values that we have in our remote config um, to, to show what we're showing on the screen. So I'll show you what it looks like right now. So this is our fidgeter. So we can just sit here and do this all day long. Um, and now we've added a new feature, probably with an in-app purchase. Um, and so we'll go into Firebase. And so this is our remote config. And you can see we've, we're showing the slider, we're showing the segmented control um, we've got a welcome message that we can use to put whatever message we want. So now we're going to add a parameter for that. Um, 
switch. So very important, once you've done that, you have to publish changes. Okay, so then we go back to our app. And now we get the switch. So, I mean, that's, that's basically how it works. Um, and Well, that wasn't even a, that wasn't even the push. That was just that was just publishing the changes and then coming back over here and hitting hitting the fetch <coughs> is what told it to to pull down the changes. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I'll show you on this. So you can do this is where you would set up a condition. And so you could set up, um, based on the OS or the device language or all kinds of stuff, um, as to who gets this new feature. So. Um, and that's pretty much it. Are there any questions? Sure. Uh huh. Um, it considers it considers a user based on the information you give it. So you can so if you don't if you're not providing any analytics data, then yeah, it will be by device. But if you provide if you provide an identifier that says this this is user X, and if you're doing that, so any device that has that user X is going to get the same values. So the user is part of the prior data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the analytics. Yeah, user properties. So you can define you can define those what properties you want to track there. And then in your app, then you have to set those whenever you know those properties. Um, and so that, that would be the main thing. Um, I haven't looked at, like, I mean, it depends on how deep you get into it, right? Because, like, if you start, if you are using this for, like, analytics and stuff, then exporting that data, yeah, to, to go someplace else is going to be a pain. Um, if you're just doing like a remote config, it's, I, I don't know what they have as far as export, but just like getting that list is not, not too difficult to do, so. Um, you know, and the nice thing is, yeah, if, if, you like, if you like set that up right, then I mean, you could turn off the Firebase stuff and it should like all work just based on like your plist file that you have in the app. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're, they've, they've set, like, like they own fabric and that's going away, like, next year, so, yeah. With the version, so you get the fix or the new version of software, mm -hmm. when you set the, the last change you fetched to come in the default going forward, or what are they setting it? Is it going to go over that time period so they go back to what your default were? It 
if I remember right, it should stay like you, that data is cached. It's just that it will. That's that's how long before it tries again to get get new values. Right. Anything else? All right. What about type? Like you had type in your mm -hmm. this string on the yeah. Yeah, on the Firebase side, it's strictly strings. Like you can't set a type at all. Um, and then that so that plist does define how, like what it's expecting and how it treats those values. Right. Um, and then also, like it said in the, like I had here, um, I was using the bool value, so that gets it to try to interpret it based on that, so. Uh, so Far, it seems like it's worked about the same. Um, I, you know, we had a thing where we had yes or no in there, and we switched it to true false so we could treat it as booleans. Um, I kind of would have expected the yes no to work as boolean, just I, especially on iOS, but it does not. So, no. <laughs> yeah, that was, so I, I mentioned that one in particular, the app version thing, because I literally spent weeks just thinking it was broken. Um, yeah, so if you go, yeah, so if you go here, and you see what looks like a header <laughs> or app, and then version that's grayed out. But the thing is, you have to select an app, and nope, not don't hit that button. Don't hit that button. I don't know what that was. So, select an app, and then you can select a version. Um, and it has, like you can do matching exactly or regular expressions. You can also provide it a list, um, so you can set it up for future versions or whatever. So I don't have any defined in here, but if you, yeah. Right, like, yeah, it's basically device language and region mm -hmm. are the things that are in there automatically, and I guess OS uh, type, so you can differentiate between Android and iOS. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit. I think once you are pulling in analytics data, then it starts providing predictions based on that. Um, I don't know if like there's particular things you have to check for, like, but. Yeah. All right, thanks.